can't win the overall World Cup, but mind you, what a fantastic World Championships. And uh, I think her season, she's not going to be too disappointed about it. Uh, Ersberg, podium in Drammen, happy, rising level of confidence in here. But then you've got to take into account the two top sprinting Swedes, uh, Finns, I should say, and Kilonen, the fastest in qualifying, and a teammate, Mona Lisa Marvaleta. The Finns are a bit unlucky, actually, that they've got these two in the same semi-final. They've actually got Niskanen in the second semi-final, and here is uh, Magdalena Payala, on the, who will be on the near side for you as they take off. So they got Kala at one end and Pagliala in white at the other. And the Norwegians right in the middle alongside the Finns. Two for Norway, two for Sweden, two for Finland. It's a Nordic battle. It certainly is. And De Bjurgen will be wanting to fare oh. better. Now, oh. that was Kiel, no, that was Malvaleto. You can see the wand is still uh, forward from Malvaleto. Yeah, she just, she just got so far forward on her toes that she couldn't stop herself. So that will uh, that will have Marvaleto uh, backing off a little. She can't afford to break free this time. Saw the women there all keeping their skis moving. Yes, very different, David. All the women will be on classic uh, stride and glide. They have not got the upper body, the arm power to double pull this course. It certainly would not be faster. So on the right there, Mona Lisa Marvaleto. Next to her, Anne Colonna, the two fins, a good start there. Bjergen biding her time, which is par for the course. She does rely very much on using the tactics and coming through, but you can see being also aggressive, Ersberg. And Ersberg it is who takes on the fins. Ersberg, who, interestingly enough, Ingrid didn't really... Uh, figure at the World Championships in Val di Fiemme. She was down in 17th place, which was a, a little bit disappointing, considering that, you know, she was runner-up in Val Mustaire. She was third, as I said, in Draman, fourth in Quebec in the freestyle sprint there. So she's had good sprint results. So around they come here, and it's unusual to see Marit at the back here, and she was none too tidy around that turn. No, she, she nearly had her weight uh, back there, which is so unusual. She's very tidy normally. This is the same strategy she adopted first time around, although she wasn't quite at the back, but watch the arm power. She will slowly move forward to second or even first position by the end of this straight, I would uh, imagine. Double pulling power. The tempo not the same as for the men. The men would rise up on their toes, drop down strong. Marit uh, works things out, and she'll have sussed out what happened in the quarterfinals. I don't think she's intrigued or intimidated by Kala. I think she knows on any day she can get the better of Kala, and she knows that Kala has, in so many competitions this season, just run out of gas. So I think Marit now believes that she's not got to worry about them, but she might have to worry about these Finns, and Kalonen and Malvaleto. I was just going to mention about the Finns. So often we see them qualifying so high up the field uh, initially, and often we see them drop back as we go through to the quarterfinals, then the, or the, then the semi. But uh, so far, so good for Kilon, and it's very, very good, positive today. Yeah, she's timed that through uh, pretty well. Sweden in second place, Norway in third. Little skate step there. And it is at the moment Charlotte Keller in second place, and there you can see Married on the near side. There's a three way battle going on for second place here, and this is a difficult angle to call this, but you can see that uh, Marit Bjergen on the near side fighting with Kala. She's also fighting on the far side with Marvaleto as they come towards the line here. Kalonen and Marvaleto, and they've got the better of Marit Bjergen, those two Finns. Well done, the Finns. There was me saying so often this season, and it really is true from uh, the first World Cup up in Kusamo. They were, they were doing so well early on, but losing it later. Today, they've got it together. And Marit Bjergen within a second. So it really rather depends on the time in the second 
of the semi-finals but that contains Justina Kowalczyk so Marit Bjergen could be unlucky you know Mike because if Justina goes the pace that she went in the quarterfinals then I fancy the second semi-final is going to be quicker You're, and you know Marit's got nothing of the magic the aggressive attacking she never wants to be outside the top two today she was in sixth so she's definitely missing some energy some feel factor well remember she's been off colour she's had you know the flu that's why she's, you know, missed out on the 30 kilometers. And, uh, you know, here, where you're talking about real power, it really counts. You need to be on top of your game. You need to have had no setbacks. And, uh, yeah, definitely suffering. I do hope she makes it through to the final, but doubtful, as you say, with Justina in this one. Ida Ingsmar's daughter, you just saw. And then uh, Niskanen. Well, can she get through and give Finns, Finland 50% of the final? Katarina Smutner, could this be her day? I just wonder, I mean, she finished very, very impressively in the quarterfinal. She had real pace up the hill. And Katja Vizna of Slovenia, who I think is tactically vulnerable here, but they're all vulnerable if Justina Kowalczyk turns this into a pole fest. <laughs> <laughs> Justina, you can just imagine her. She'll be slow off the start. She'll attack to the top and probably take the lead at the top of the first climb. And Rojan getting into this semi-final by virtue of being a lucky loser, but a deserved lucky loser, skied really, really well. So we've got Slovenia and Poland and Austria and Finland and Sweden and France. No double ups here, really good. Six countries represented. Very smart start by Aurora on the near side. But there you can see Katja Viznar going out there. Justina, exactly as you said, Mike, takes those first 15 to 20 pole pushes to find her rhythm. And now she's going to turn left-handed and have a little uh, moment there with Aurore Jean. It wasn't tidy at all, David, and that's where uh, Justina Kowalczyk lacks. She doesn't have the movement, uh, the fast movement, but now she'll pick up. Yeah, well, Aurore Jean was a bit brave there, deciding she was going to take on... Justina, because Justina's really muscled her out of it. And here goes Justina on the far side there, just powering up here, wants to be in first place to take this turn, which allows her to do it at her speed. And Katia Vizna going with her as she must. They all know, if they can, that their only chance is to go with Justina. And there's the advantage, absolutely, David, into, of course, the wind behind us at this stage. And now we're turning round into the wind, and uh, Vishnar knows she wants to be in behind uh, as close as she can, and that's why she's cutting it tight, in behind Justina, up this straight, into the wind. Question is, can Niskanen, who's in third place there, make any difference? And Ida Ingsmar's daughter really caught out by the pace there of Justina Kowalczyk. And you can see that Jean is back there, and also Smutner just not got into this. And the, such is the gap that even if they've got pace towards the end, can they close this sort of deficit? Do you know, I think the, the shock treatment there, the incredible first 35 seconds from Justina, it's blown the rest of the field. And I think that it was only Vishnar who saw it coming. She knew what she had to do to get this advantage, tuck in behind, if you can, into the wind. Niskazen's done a good job there. She's not quite back with them, as you can see. She's not far away. If uh, there is any weakness in Visna going up the final hill, Niskanen might just find it. She's really sticking to her task here. Justina polling hard, and Visna, visibly to me, hasn't got much left here to give. Justina could just do this day and night. And look at Justina, well, not anymore, but she's going up onto her toes, and that's good, so you get the lean, the whole body weight leans forward, and you're getting that little initial impact of your weight rather than muscles taking the first impact. Niskanen, ooh, wasn't the best cornering there. Now she's got to really run for her life. Smutner's got into fourth place. Ida Ingsman's daughter too far away, but she's in fifth. Now it's all about whether Niskanen can catch uh, Vizna. Little by little, she's been closing the gap here. 2.49.4, the time of the first of the semi-finals. And uh, Justina on the far side, Vizna on the near side. And Niskanen's given all that she can. And look at this, 2.46.4, a whole three seconds quicker. And so that means that Niskanen will make this because she's three seconds... Uh, she's Three seconds faster this semi-final. Niskanen, and I would say Marit. Marit Bjergen and Niskanen will get through because Smutner is 4.6 seconds back. Uh, Marit will be delighted if that is the case, and I think you're right, David. 
Well, Justina just commanding. And Niskanen actually for her guts there in chasing hard in third place has got the reward. Of that I'm pretty sure. She's definitely through. Um, and I would say that Marit Bjergen should make it as well. Marit will have, uh, or the coaches will have been watching that to advise Marit if she gets through how she should uh, challenge Kowalczyk. So unofficially for me, best or lucky losers, Marit Bjergen from the first semi and Kurtu Niskanen, and that is now confirmed. So, the first of the uh, men's uh, semi-finals, and uh, there is Thomas Nortug and Petter Nortug in the first semi-final, the two brothers, Teodor Pedersen in here. And Mike, you've got news about Teodor Pedersen. Well, that's right, he obstructed, the jury felt he obstructed Nortug, so he's received a... In the quarter-final. In the quarter-final, so he's received a written reprimand, so he cannot make any errors this time or he's out. And uh, Ustagov there for uh, Russia, Andrew Newell in black for the United States of America wearing 10 and Legjanin. So we've got two Norwegians, two Russians, a Swede and an American in here. I think this is uh, fascinating. And what will younger brother do against older brother? Now remember, younger brother wears 20, older brother wears 7 in the red. And they both got white hats as well. I must admit, the uh, <laughs> younger brother, Nortug, he was impressive in the first run out, but uh, he's got his work cut out this time for certain. So four leading out here, Teodor Pedersen in the centre on the extreme far side there. That's uh, Ustagov. Uh, Sorry, Dave, Ustagov's uh, double polling is interesting. He doesn't go for the tempo. He goes for the very long reach. And, well, it's certainly been proven by... Uh, well, those who study body movement, that it is more efficient to take the shorter, more dynamic strides rather than look at Ustikov, long, slow strides. Over a period of time, that is less efficient than the shorter, sharper jabs. Ustikov, this season, the skiathlon under 23 world champion, the 15 kilometer un, uh, freestyle champion, and go back two seasons, he won the sprint freestyle. Uh, final, he won the 10 Classic, he won the Skiathlon. So, in the last two years, he's actually notched up five junior world and under 23 gold medals. That's the talent of uh, Ustagov. But has he got his strategy right, David? He's at the front. Look at the head when they pull the flags there, blowing so strong. Peter Nortug is at the very back. Is that the right strategy? Probably is, but he's got a lot of traffic to fight through. But Andrew Newell there. Andrew Newell, who's slipped down to fifth place in the Sprint World Cup, and that's largely because of the last couple of uh, performances of his. 27th in Lati, 27th in Draman, and uh, those were, by his standard, very poor performances. He's got this really is his last chance of the season to uh, really show what sort of sprinter he is. Tiro Pedersen uh, uh, skated quite a long way around the corner, so did Nortug, I felt. Nortug on the right of your picture, going effectively the long way round. Newell in fourth place, and Teodor Pedersen now in third. And it's Petter Nortug versus uh, Ustagov. And Nortug now, the senior Nortug, that is, <laughs> giving uh, everybody, including his younger brother, a bit of a polling lesson up this final climb. You see, you come to the lip, you think you're almost there, but you have to do even more. And uh, Teodor Pedersen and Ustagov. Ustagov in third place there, 2.23. So Nortug gets through and does Teodor Pedersen. And Ustagov must wait and see. It's a pretty good time, 2.23. It's not like uh, the quarterfinals, 2.19.6. But 2.23 is not bad when you consider now, Mike, that they've done the the prologue time trial, the quarterfinals, and now the semi. Yes, fatigue, David, uh, certainly it has to play its part, but then again, last week at Draman, look at Nortuk just jump 